Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Under Rail. In the last video, we went up to the upper Under Rail rail lines and explored a little bit of this area to get some Adi experience points, which leveled us to level 15. I then decided to double back to Core City and finish exploring it in its entirety. And that means heading into the sewer system. We found a new area that I haven't seen before, filled with muties and acid dogs in a... Uh, water-filled wasteland of sorts down there. It must be where all the trash is ending up being washed down to that can't make its way out into the... Uh, not an ocean, not a bay, not a... Is it a sea? It's not a lake, bigger than a lake. Or maybe it's not. The lake outside of Core City. That was kind of fun to explore. We found a poor, poor dog which is undergoing changes into a acid dog, or it looks like it... That was what was going on. I decided to not interact with it those final few times on the suspicion it would turn to one and then attack us. I like to pretend by us not clicking on it again, it will still be alive in the future and hopefully not suffering. <laughs> and in this episode, we're going to explore the rest of the sewer system, I think. Somewhere down in here, I have heard there is a tattoo artist. And I don't know too much about him, other than he gives you a single tattoo, supposedly. I don't know if you can buy it or if it's given to you as a part of a quest or something of the sort. Oh, this is new! Oh, I like this! They've added agility checks to let you jump over the railing here. If we had, and we do have, a cave hopper stake, we could make this jump, if I so desired. But with only one cave hopper stake, we can't make the jump back. Uh, in any case, I am aware that this tattoo artist can give you a tattoo which is rather unique. Uh, I know nothing else about it, I other than there's like 15 or 25 different types. Uh, so I'll have to take... Uh, I'm hoping to meet him, uh, that tattoo artist. I think he's a mutant or a mutie who lives down here and who won't be hostile to... Ooh! I hope. Hostile to us. That scared me. All right, Siphoner. So... If I start shooting, other people are going to come and investigate that noise. But I think I wouldn't mind that happening, given the choke point we have around here. So let's go ahead and activate bullet time. And then, just begin killing this annoying siphoner. Why'd I take that? <laughs> Let's see if we can get something's attention. Anyone? I know there's mutants around the corner, but they did, I guess they didn't hear the pistol shots. Or maybe pistol fire is not uncommon down here. Alright, I don't know why... Oh, actually, I know why I have this bad habit. I have a bad habit of taking everything off of corpses. Because I am used... I am very used... To needing to loot the corpses. In order to make sure that they're not around anymore. After I... Uh, after combat. Or during combat. And we're not getting in that way. All right, Tim. All right, come on. <laughs> you can't be anything things to talk about. You just started. So, something about Underrail, which I don't really think of too much, but is the case, is that there's no sky in any of Underrail, is there? I tend not to think about that very much when I'm walking through the different passages. The sewer system here is one such area where it's more... Uh, noticeable than, say, when we were in the cave system. But this entire world is all beneath the surface. Every single bit of it. No one here has seen the sun. All the light is either from, like, fungus or, fl or other means of, like, a fluorescent light, or it's Artificial in nature. Oh, I'm sorry, bio, uh, bioluminescence, I think is what I want to say. Oh, come on. You, you know I'm here. You know I'm here, mutant. There you are. Or mutee. Uh, let's let you get a little closer to me. A part of me has thought about... A part of me has thought about... I have considered lowering the 
uh, gamma in the game in order to make it feel a little darker for us. But then I don't think you guys would, would actually see anything that's going on. Oh, that's interesting. We gain extra action points for firing the gun. I guess that makes sense. I thought the rapid reloader gave you action points back when you hit the target. And you still have to fire the gun, obviously, to do so. Oh. I'll take the risk. Oh, hello. Okay. I must say, I'll take the risk and assume that they'll walk into me, but I'll win the initiative. Uh, I, that kind of happened. They have a sniper. So the most important thing that I need to consider is enough action points to round this corner. So I need 26 left over. So I can take two pot shots. I'm not going to use bullet time quite yet. I will use... Oh. No, we won't use the aim shot. Okay. I think they were all bunched up together, which is why we see the guy with the sledgehammer in front of the mutated dog. Uh, we don't have a great chance to hit them. Let's throw a flare. Oh, that's much better. Let's use our medallion on the sledgehammer guy. To afflict him with psychotemporal dilation. That will take away 10 action points, I think, and something like 45 movement points. Oh, no, 10 action points and 20 movement points only. Okay. I thought it was a little more powerful than that, but I was wrong. Keep focusing on the dog. Stay here, which is, I think, out of line of sight of their sniper. I would like to kill the dog first. We'll then taser the mutie and punch him a few times. Uh, okay, let's let's let him get a little closer and in, or, or her and into the light. Activate her shield just to be safe. I don't think she'll be able to take a shot, and she can't. Okay, you two. So, let's activate bullet time. And do a close-ranged aim shot. Nice! One down. You have a knife in your hand. I think. Or is it a pistol? It's a pistol. It doesn't matter. You're dead. All right! That was easy. Ooh, wow. Not a very good crossbow, but worth quite a pretty penny. A s the sniper rifle. We'll take a look at how good that is in a, in a bit. Actually, I guess we'll take everything. And these remains, too. And then let's get over to the barrel to leave some of this garbage in here. All right, now what do we get? A sledge... Can we break this stuff down? We can. All right, let's break down our sledgehammer. So we're going to break this all down for parts. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to do something that I keep meaning to do and I haven't done. I talk a lot of crap on this game about how much I I prefer classic mode over oddy mode and how I it seemed to miss a great deal more often than I hit, which is not the case at all. It's totally the opposite, or we wouldn't have we wouldn't be killing anything if that, that had been the case. And I complain about missing several 95% shots in a row and stuff of that sort. But I feel it's important to occasionally remember that this is a phenomenal game. I really like Underrail. And as much as I hate on some aspects of it, I don't think I have been very fair to Stygian Software when I do that. They came up with a really unique 
I'd say fun way to level yourself up that feels a little more natural, or at the very least feels incredibly unique compared to most other games that have an experience point system in it. The world is fantastically done, with tons of lore put in it. Studion Software supports this game and has released numerous patches and extra content for it years after it's been released. They have done an amazing job of fixing bugs and glitches, addressing balance issues, again, years after it has been released as well, and I think it is important to remember that they've done a great deal of this for free. And you can tell that they really do love the game they made, and they want other people to like it, and that they are also not willing to budge on some things. If they think something needs changing, and they feel it's for the better, they will go ahead and make those changes. And for the vast majority of those changes, I agree with, with Cision Software. And even though I hate on the Audi mode, because it's grindy, <laughs> and it requires a certain character build, I like it anyway. I do secretly like Audi mode. <laughs> Mostly because it's tougher than Classic. Although I do find Classic funner than Oddity. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit distracted. What I wanted to say is... And I don't think anyone from Stygian Software will see this video. But thank you, Stygian Software. You have made a fantastic game that I have sunk 1,400 hours into. Because I really love your combat. I love the world setting. I love the different factions and figuring out their quest lines. All the different contents uh, in the game. I like how your choices matter. I liked like fighting Oculus after 800 hours of playing the game. I did not even realize that they were in it. <laughs> it is... Oh, it is amazing! And, I'm, and I almost died. <laughs> it is amazing... And I feel I should be a little more, uh, that's, not, not the, that's the wrong way to phrase it. I feel it is important to thank the makers of this fine, incredible game for the amount of work they've put into it. I know a lot of you guys have really enjoyed watching me play this game, and I'm having a lot of fun playing through it. I can only hope that Stygian Software feels the same way that that they realize how much fun I've had playing their game and how appreciative we all are that they have given all of us these hundreds of hours of me playing this game for us to enjoy together. Thank you, Stygian Software. <laughs> I, I don't mean to be a brown nose or something like that, or a fanboy, but it's an amazing game. And I feel like, I feel like for all the games I play, or the vast majority of them, I really... I really need to stop occasionally and thank the developers of these games for the amount of effort and work they've put into them. Even games that I have problems with, and by problems I mean uh, I take like just balance problems with, or I can't recommend the game because of certain things, like Occult Chronicles, for example, which, oh, it's, it's such a shame, Occult Chronicles, you could have been, you could have been a lot better. But, I mean, it's still a great game, uh, well, hmm. I still like the game. I still like the game. I still have hundreds of hours put in it. And Vic Davis put all that time and effort into making that game and then releasing it into the world for us to, to enjoy it. And so, I don't know. I want to take some time. And I guess this is this is, uh, this is is Tim's thank you, game developers, for making the games you have made. I really appreciate the amount of time and effort you have put into them. Especially the games that I'm playing, because these are obviously the best games. That's the last empty Mugen container we can get everyone. That gives us two more Adi points. And there was nothing down here before. Let's see if there's anything down here now. Any tattoo person? Oh, this is new. This is new. Wait, this barrel is not new, but this exit is new.
back to the light and dark thing. Playing a game like this in this view, this isometric view with a turn-based strategy game, there's some things which is... how to describe it? If this was a first-person game, this would be like a horror game, wouldn't it? The various areas of it. Like, we'd have... it'd be like Stalker when you're in the sewer system. Uh, right? Where you fought the, the blood suckers in the Stalker game. And it'd be terrifying. <laughs> for this area, but the turn-based nature of the game makes me excited to run around and fight enemies. I'm super interested in seeing what each what the difficulties are in each new room and how I can overcome the puzzle and defeat all the enemies within it, as opposed to being terrified <laughs> when I walk through them and worry about things jumping out, like jumping out of a dumpster and scaring me half to death, and then trying to eat my face. Hello, Booth. A subtle noise of a nearby lantern for a moment is interrupted by a quiet yet distinct sound of a pen and paper being laid down on a messy table written with oddities of various kind. Facing you now is a mutie who, according to his facial expression, is not at all surprised by your presence in his room. He slowly looks at you from top to bottom, spending a few seconds to glance at each of your extremities. After that, his eyes meet yours as his mouth slowly opens. The shadow covers his mutated tongue, which he wipes his with which he wipes his tiny lips. Welcome to my lair. What is this place? His hand reaches for his back as he picks up what seems to be a tattoo gun of sorts. It's connected via a long stitch-up cord into a makeshift apparatus, a chemical set of glassware filled with colorful liquid. Even though the place seems to be a mess, a commendable effort was made to maintain the overall hygiene. He uses the tip of the gun to point to a nearby brown table. I brand those who wish to engrave and carry on their most special memories until the end of times. Or perhaps to cover things they do not wish to see, to look better. You brand people care to elaborate in my past and this current life there is only one thing that didn't change my drive to experience the world hence I've made this layer of remembrance which was supposed to keep it all together this curse I have did its best to stop me in my tracks words could no longer contain memories pictures drawings he shakes his head. This was the solution I came up with. <sighs> Our skin. Just another place to engrave the moments of import. A gruesome bowel sound bursts out of his open mouth. Disgusting drool pierces through his withered teeth as he struggles to cover it all. With his free hand, he eventually manages to pinpoint the wane muscle of his jaw, closing it. After which, he peeks up a sheet of paper to wipe the remaining stains. He used to have a caretaker here. He conducted many exploits to keep us alive. He's gone now. For who knows how long. And so I made this. To give myself a reason. To keep going. He rise, raises his... He raises his both hands slightly. And then drops them down lifelessly. How'd you end up in here? That is a story long past. So long, I cannot even remember it. With his free hand, he points to his stomach, which is overgrown in tumors. Looking closely, you notice that the tumors have spread over a tattoo he used to have there. Small fractions of the drawings can still be seen, and they depict a portion of a map with many lines on it, indicating a path. However, due to his condition, it's impossible to tell where did that track lead to? Who even comes here? Many, or few. I struggle to keep track. This curse I'm afflicted with is eating away my... my memories. Tell me more about this procedure. Drawing symbols? He scratches his hand. Uh, he scratches 
He scratches his hand. Marks is the only drive I have left. For a human, a single tattoo. He lets us forth back and forth between you and some drawings. Free of charge. Free of charge. To brand a person with a mark is uh, something I see as as a risk. One could regret forever after, just like I did, with what I've become. To ask anyone to pay for such an undertaking would be too much, even for the likes of myself. And only one tattoo. That's how many I've made for myself before all of this. One desire, one fatal mistake. He shakes his head. It's a reminder of what I used to be and what I've become. I refuse to play the odds and brand the others. Lucky to be normal with more than one way ticket to this hell. It's a faint memory of what I knew about myself and the bridge to becoming this. The day I had my first tattoo was the last day I have lost everything. Interesting. It sounds like the tattoo he gave himself gave him this condition? Or did something else to him besides having this condition? Would Decker get that tattoo? I mean, he wasn't... I don't really know that much about Decker from Invisible Ink. Probably not. He probably wouldn't get it. <sighs> or maybe he would. I don't know. Oh, I guess he would. I guess all the people from Invisible Ink would if it would increase their power at all, right? There was one mission in Invisible Ink where you could have someone, uh, like, get another slot unlocked in their in their brain for an extra space. Like, for an extra chip or something like that. It's been a long time since I played Invisible Ink. But it either gave you space, you could slot something in it, or it let you slot something into an empty space. And it would, I guess it would hurt a lot. And it'd knock the person out for, like, one or two turns. And then they'd come to. And then you had to escape the mission. And I guess they would do that to get more power. So, yeah, so I guess he would do so. All right. Let's do it. Point him to where you would like to have a tattoo. He nods in approval. Oh. That's interesting. Okay, I, I, I looked ahead at the answers. He nods in approval. After that, he slowly reaches for some of his additional equipment in preparation for the task ahead. Take a slit on that table. He, he points once again to the brown table next to him. Or lay down. Or whatever you feel like. You assume an appropriate position, best suited for the place which you chose to get tattooed. While waiting, only now you, while waiting, only now you get a proper chance to look around. The room is stuffed with scrambled paper, books, and all-around junk. It is chaotic, to say the least. All the walls and his furniture are inscribed with letters and drawings, an art of a kind hard to understand at first glance. There are so many illustrations to a point where they have started to overlap one another, causing them to be convoluted to a point of a total mess. A few minutes go by as you look all around before he gets ready. He sits down on his old stool and is now very close to you. Now, tell me what you'd like to be branded with. Choose wisely. We haven't done very much, everyone. We haven't done very much in the game, have we? We're, we're level 15. There's so much of the game we have not even seen yet. What have we slayed? 
I want a tattoo worthy of a great slayer of... Hmm. Actually, hmm. How about the part I'm a, I'm a part of... Uh, not Southgate Station. Hmm. I think I'll postpone this. Perhaps... He looks at you in the eyes but makes a slight nod. After that, he slowly lowers his tools on the green desk behind him. Perhaps you would be interested to check out my wares. In addition to all of this, he hand waves over all the art hanging on the walls. I also sell some fine leather. Oh! Yeah, show me your goods. He's buying three medicines and three foodstuffs. Okay, we'll sell him that. And we're reaching a point where we can start selling... Oh, actually, we should sell the psionic inhalants. Because we're never going to use those. He's buying food? I felt kind of bad for him being down here without anything really good to eat. So, let's... Uh, we'll give him some rat hound steak. And we'll give him a eel sandwich. And what is he selling, by the way? Oh my god! He's selling phenomenal leather! Quality 91 siphoner leather. Oh! Someone told me he sells, like, super high-quality cave hopper leather, too. So, I, from killing cave hoppers, the highest quality leather I think I have ever acquired is either, it's like 67? Maybe 68? Us uh, cave hoppers. Uh, from, from siphoners. That's been the highest I've ever gotten. And from cave hoppers, it's been, like, 32 from killing cave hoppers. That one cave hopper, those two cave hoppers we found to the south of Southgate Station... Those had the highest quality cave hopper leather I had ever seen at like quality 60 something, 68 or so. So the fact he sells super high quality le cipher leather is really awesome. I would totally be down with buying that right now. He's still not selling very high level boots. Balakava, Balakava. Quality 54 cave hopper leather. The kind we have higher quality that we got from the corpses. But that's interesting. I wonder what it I wonder if it does go up to like 60 or something. And I don't think I need any of that. Okay, let's let's make this trade. Okay, so we know he's here. We can come back here later as if we need to. I'm not going to search his shelves. I wonder if we can purchase something from him later on to help us with our leather working. Because I do intend to take it. Am I putting points into leather working? I am. Okay, I, I went down that path. Yeah, we haven't done anything notable yet. So, I think after we get our player housing... Then we'll come back down here in order to get a tattoo. We will have explored all of Underrail uh, at that point. Uh, we will have solved the problems for several different stations as well. Like, uh, we'll have solved Camp Harthor's problem. Actually, we, we already solved Camp Harthor's problems. We'll have solved Rail Crossing, Foundry's issues as well. Should all be said and done. And we'll have fought in the arena for some time also. Okay, Tim, do you do this? We do this. Alright, so let's put this on. And I am not fishing, am I? No, we are fishing. Okay. Alright, let's do some more sewer fishing. While we're here, and we can talk about some random things that I still have not written anything down to talk about the games I'm playing. So I guess I'll just mention their names in case one, any of you guys could be like, oh, hey, I play that game, and, or stuff like that. Maybe you can tell me how, how far you got in it. So I am playing through the original Half-Life. I am not recording it, but I've been very tempted to, as it has been incredible to play through the original game again. It holds up rather well. All things considered, all these years later. Now, this is not the Black Mesa uh, game. This is the actual Half-Life. And I, for I forgot how, like, 
well uh, crafted the weapons are in that game. Like the shotgun has a good amount of heft to it. When you hit something with the alt fire, that feels phenomenal. Uh, the the creatures that weren't in Half Life Two, the bull squids and the sound dogs. It's been fun to see these things again. It's been so long. And I'm very impressed with what they had done with Half-Life 2, with what they had to work with with Half-Life 1 for continuing the story of it. In any case, my intention is to play through the Half-Life and then play through Opposing Forces and Blue Shift. I'm probably not going to record them, though I, I've been so tempted to do so. I've only played through Opposing Forces and Blue Shift once, and I don't remember anything about Opposing Forces other than... It's got a really different boss. It requires you running back and forth through these different gun turrets. And I don't remember anything about Blue Shift other than that other than there wasn't a final boss for that game. So that's been it's been a lot of fun to play to play it again. Uh, I am playing through a game I'm super addicted to right now called Loop Hero. Holy crap! What a mistake that was to to try that game out. Oh my god, I can't stop playing the game. <laughs> I can't stop playing the game. I just, um, all my free time is, is spent doing that. I'm like, Tim, you should record more Felsiel. Record more Felsiel. I'm like, yep. Just one more loop. Just one more loop. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And I've been super tempted to record that one. But no, I not not yet. I don't think so. If like two or three of you tell me to record it, maybe I'd go ahead and, and do that. But I have other games on the list that need to get uh, done, right? We've got to play through Sacrifice, and I would like to play through Tides of Numenera. Uh, Sacrifice won't be a long game. Tides of Numenera will be very long. That's like Planescape Torment. That's going to be something like 100 videos or so. Or like Underrail. Yeah, like, like it's like Underrail. Very long... Uh, actually, I don't know if it's... I think that game celebrates the story quite a bit, like Planescape Torment or Disco Elysium, as opposed to, say, having a lot of combat in it, like Underrail does. Speaking of that, I suppose I should mention, once again, so I'll talk about Underrail earlier. I'm going to quickly mention how good the combat is in Underrail and how good the writing is, too. I've been working on upgrading my rating system. To have more granularity. It's why you guys haven't seen the review for the Dark Mod or for Hard Reset. Because I have to sit down and give myself more no, more numbers to work with. Actually, let's go right for the, uh, the one fishing hole. I think it's this one. We're going to try to get the ghost face. I got a ghost face here with Gabriel. We're going to get one here... Hopefully, with Decker. Yeah, so I'm trying to get more granularity for that. So I haven't... I, thus, I haven't recorded the reviews uh, for those. Why was I talking about the reviews? <laughs> oh, Tim, you're having another ADHD moment? I can't keep my mind on track talking about the things I was just talking about. Uh, in any case... Oh, hold on, I got sneeze. Uh, it's right there. It's at the tip of my nose. They know they, they only come in pairs. Okay, I guess, I guess no second, no second sneeze. Oh nope, nope, nope. Let's fish. I want to, I want to drop that right here. Right. I was talking about the granularity because of the reviews. I was talking about the reviews because of the writing. I was talking about the writing because of how good Underrails is. Uh, Underrails has done a phenomenal job with some of the writing in this game. Like, in an incredible job. I remember the first time we met Todd down in the Abyssal Station Zero. And I remember the conversation you have with him as you help him talk through what occurred to him and the survivors down there. And man, I remember <laughs> choking up like I'm not going to cry... 
play on Rail. I'm a I'm a giant sap, everyone. I get super emotional reading sad things or things which are like super lovey dovey that uh, that I find like uh, adorable. Like uh, what was the game? Odin Sphere. I loved the love story between uh, what was it? Gwendolyn and what was his name? It begins with an O. I can't remember the Dark Knight's name, but I loved it, <laughs> and I loved I loved getting to see that story from both their points of view as well, and what they sacrificed for each other, and so on. And, uh, oh man, I loved it. <laughs> I love crap like that. And so, uh, you put something sad in, in front of me to read or to experience, and you present it really well, the writing is really good, oh man, that's, that's gonna be tough for me to get through. And Underrail's got several, several bits of it like that. All those, uh, those, uh, discs you find in the Black Sea that detail the things that occurred, those were well done. And especially how creepy the health station was. Holy crap! I got chills doing that the first time. With the, uh, you cannot help, you cannot save her. What? I'm sorry. You must have misheard, you must have misheard me. I said, oh sorry, the robot says you can't help her. <laughs> and you say, what? And she's like, I'm sorry, you must have misheard me. I said, I can't help you. It was so well done. That was so well done. <laughs> oh my god. It was awesome. Siphoner! Alright, so let's move up. And we'll stun you and then punch you to death. I missed one of them, but you're incapacitated. You see, one more punch to kill you. Call the 44. Now, we're, I think we're done. I'm not going to explore all these ladders because I know there's Death Stalkers down. I think there's like two Death Stalkers down one of these or a Death Stalker and some Crawlers. And while there is, I think, a three-point Adi item down there, we ain't getting it without dying. Like, actually, by that I mean we ain't getting it. It's, it's too tough for us to acquire at this stage of the game. We'll have to come back here later, and my, my plan will be to be back here more level 18 or level 19 or so. So we'll come back and search the rest of that area then, because we're no match for a Deathstalker. We're like, what, one level higher? Maybe two levels higher from where we first met one by the Rat Hound King? Okay, off we go through the Toxic Barrels. Actually, I guess we should search these all of them just to mark it as empty all right thank you gas mask all right and i think everyone oh actually i guess that's not quite it so we'll explore a little more oh, i don't need any of this crap no biology is in the cards for decker all right, let's go this way I don't think we're able to access the other parts of the sewer system until we begin our quest for JKK, which I intend to do. A few of you in the last video were like, Tim, you should totally, absolutely do JKK's quest line. And so we are going to do exactly that. Uh, I began doing the JKK quest line on Sigil. Oh, this is interesting. I didn't realize this was even available at this point. So we are not ready for this. <laughs> there is audio experience points in here. But we're doomed if we go in here at... Oh, are we? You have hacking, right, Tim? We do. Alright, we'll give it a try. So... Uh, some history for you and me and this part of the game. This was my first encounter with coil spiders uh, in Underrail. I had managed to avoid encountering them first, and I had done most of 
most exploring under rail. Uh, but by the time I reached this point, I somehow missed the Hakate Station, I think is what it's called, uh, where we got the Power Fist from. I didn't venture through that area. I forgot all about it. And so this was the first time I encountered Cool Spires. I was like level, I think, 20, 19 or so. And I was not prepared to fight something new. And I was creeped out by what they look like. These giant daddy long legs things that shoot uh, electricity. And my character wasn't good at seeing traps. And those those silk traps of theirs got me killed 15, 20 times trying to navigate through that area. There are coil spiders, thus, I'm trying to get at this, in this area, if you don't have hacking at a significant level to get past the uh, the locks here. We'll give it a try. Even in the faint light, you're able to clearly make out the grimace of the person standing on the other side of the glass window. Despite being separated by a physical barrier, you feel devoured by his baleful eyes, strangled by his clutching hands, and can almost hear the crackling of your bones between his grinding teeth. His silent, malevolent scrutiny makes you feel more and more uneasy about this predicament. This foul repulsive creature has you trapped, as you see no obvious way to escape. Luckily, before your mind can conjure up any horrifying way to the dreadful event you find yourself in to unfold, the man speaks. Isn't it my lucky week? You people just keep coming, yes. Guess it's going to be quite a feast. Mm. You'll do just fine. He lets out a sinister laugh. What is all this nonsense? Who are you? What is all this nonsense? Look at me. I'm tough. No one can hurt me. Blah, blah. You all pretend to be tough. But in the end, you all scream when I rip your chest open and take a bite out of your warm heart. Mmm. You'll eat the dirt off my boot. I'll eat your flesh. You be sure of that. Mm. But first, a tiny jolt. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, no! This shouldn't have happened. No! Damn, faulty wiring. Damn it. You stay put. You can do that if you like. And I believe the floor becomes electrified and kills you. So, all right. Down there leads to coil spiders. Let's see if we've got what it takes to not fight coil spiders. We do. Or at least we can get in here. Fast. A double lock. Interesting. Actually, technically, this is a series of airlocks. Uh, airlocks? Is that what? No, it's not what they're called, but it looks like there was. Judging from the windows of what happened here, this maybe this was prisoner transport? That's something else I like trying to figure out is what purpose did this serve? before being claimed by this uh, cannibal here. I have no clue. Hello, box. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, looks like just a bunch of junk. Has been stored in here. Frag grenade, frag grenade, hammer. Uh, the hammer actually is worth selling. Uh oh. Oh, okay. I, I must. <laughs> can I go in those? Yes, Tim. You, you can totally go in those. Oh, I have so many things on my front hotbar. I forgot my omni tools on control three instead. I right, cave your poison, Caltross. We don't we don't care about those. A one twenty one quality circular wave amplifier. So lots of people hate on the circular wave amplifiers. Uh, I think these are used mostly for shields. I think this could be used for energy weapons as well, though. Uh, but for shielding, they 
they like triple the amount of energy that gets drained when you get hit, uh, which generally makes it very inefficient against blocking things that aren't powerful attacks, but it really increases the amount blocked if you're struck by something that has like a high impact attack. So for example, a amplified shield would save you from taking almost any damage from a sniper rifle using an aim shot against you. ABP console, BioCorp Core Electronics, firmware version 1.23, searching for newer version. Error 35, no connection. Canceling update. Uh, activate emergency gate release. Activating emergency gate release. Main gate failed. Unknown error. Mechanic medical bay gate successfully opened. Medical bay gate. Security gate 1, 2, 3 successfully opened. Activate backup power system. Unable to activate backup power system. Please contact your power supply administrator. Okay. So, did that open the main door? Sorry, it's very important. I charge my hacks war right now. Okay, so... Let's... Go through the vent. Okay, we did open this door. All right, perfect. But I'm not sure we should go through it. Uh-oh. It's like someone escaped into the vents. And if I recall correctly, they died in this corner. A bear trap and a bandage. This is... See, it's things like this that I absolutely love in Underrail. What does this tell us? This tell us that he, that he tr the bandage might be like from part of his pants leg. And he died because the bear trap got him. And he bled to death. Here. That also tells us that there's probably another bear trap. Or that there are traps up ahead of us. And I think there is absolutely a trap. I don't see it. All right, out we go. Oh, that's pretty gruesome. A dead body is set up as if it's eating dinner. I know there's a trap like right in front of us. <laughs> I know it's here. I know it's here. Alright. We're starting combat. Because there he is. Oh god! Chop Chop looks rather awesome. I forgot he got a new graphic. I thought he I I thought he was just a normal plasma bot. No, he looks incredible. Let's shock Zaman. Actually, what's my chance to shoot him? Only 89? Yeah, let's shock him. Let's activate bullet time. Aim shot. Switch to our jacketed hollow point rounds. Very close to killing him, but just barely not enough damage. Let's activate Sprint. Get into the room and shut this door. Switch for W2C rounds. Wait around. Our taser is off a of cooldown, and I have enough to use it. 
So I'm actually not going to shoot him this round. We're going to move away. Actually, that was dumb. I should have used our Strange Medallion on it. Okay. So we can't get around him now, so it's up to us to, to kill him. Let's shock him. Which will stun it for a round. God, look at it. Look at the, like, skull when it's uh, up here in that visor. It looks pretty awesome. I like this thing. Let me punch it to death. Actually, we have to use, uh, I suppose, weakness. Right, it can't be, it can't be, uh, incapacitated, because it's a bot. Uh, let's aim shot. We'll take some morphine. Punch it. Punch it. I should have used the adrenaline before I started punching. Okay. Uh, I should have taken it beforehand because that I constantly forget that adrenaline increases our strength by two points. So I should totally be do be using it to do that. But if I decide I want to punch things, and I decide that I'm going to do this by and we need adrenaline, I should use the adrenaline right away. Okay. Chop Chop has a plasma core. Decent level. Hey! Self-conscious module. Surely it doesn't serve the purpose its markings suggest. We'll go ahead and grab that and all the other stuff. Was that a unique one? Unique to Chop Chop? Or is is that the one that all the, all the plasma bots have? Uh... I can't tell. I guess we'll find out when we kill some plasma bots. Okay. All right, we did it, everyone. Let's go ahead and open up the door. Uh, activate the main gate release. Just some cave hopper leather. Nothing in the desk. All right, Zamen. The Dehumanizer. We'll take a look at that together in a few seconds. He's got nothing else I'm interested in. Looks like there's something under his bed. But I can't quite make out what it is. There you are. It's a crawler trap, too. Oh, wow, that's nasty. Three-eyed skull. It's a three-eyed human skull. Where is your god now? Take that. I think that is also what was in the sewer system area. I was at before. I mentioned there's a three-point Adi in there. I think that was also it. You notice a small twitch of an arm that's barely attached to a man lying on the table. This poor guy. Agent Rual. Oh, is that right? Yep. Rual? And he's got a Cortec pamphlet. A short document saying the technological achievements, purpose, and general tenets of the Cortec organization. Alright, so we didn't need pickpocketing for that one after all. Interesting. I wonder if it's possible to get all of these different oligarchs, uh, workers, Adi items without pickpocketing. I always forget, so I know that's on that body, but generally I thought this area was locked to you unless you were working on, uh, uh, unless you were, unless you joined Cortex. A heads up that this uh, Cortex quest requires you to go in here to search that body for an item that you need. And so I'm aware that the pamphlet's on that body, but by the time I usually do that, I'm either not playing Adi mode or I've already pickpocketed the court tech item off of a corp, uh, corpse, off of a person. Uh, Tim, there's no way, there's no reason to go that way. All right, not bad. So we gained quite a bit of audio experience points here, and we've cleared out the sewer system. So I think we'll probably call it a session, everyone. I'm gonna go. I guess we'll do this on screen. We're gonna go back upstairs. Back upstairs. We're gonna go back 
to the merchant area. We'll see if the merchants have refreshed their inventory. I'll go ahead and vendor some stuff. If so, store some stuff. And that will do it for us. Alright, and in the meantime, I guess we can talk more about the other games I'm currently playing. Yeah, so I was talking about the numbers and the and the writing and Underrail. Because I feel like I gave Underrail a much lower score for the writing it deserves. I... Based on my reaction to some of the writing Underrail has had, uh, it should be a really high number. Uh, I think I gave it like a 2 on a scale of 1 to 3. And I want more granularity because I think Underrail deserves like a 5 on a scale of 1 to 6. The writing in this game is really well done. It's It's been incredible. I've really liked it. Not quite as good as Planescape Torment, but phenomenal. Really, really great. It's going to be really hard to top Planescape Torment when it comes to writing. But this game comes very, very close to it. Better than uh, Disco Elysium, in my in my humble opinion, as well. Disco will probably get get a 4 from me. Alright, what, what am I doing? I'm looking for my gas mask. Yeah, so I want to re-review all the games I had reviewed last year in order to give them all the same... I want, I want to use the same scoring system for all the games I play. And so that means I'd have to re review all the games I played. I'd still keep the same text. I have all that written down. So thankfully that won't be too hard to accomplish. But I will have to record a, a little bit of the, all these games to get, to get myself a backdrop. So I can play that while I talk again about each of these games. Something else I meant to do that I haven't done. Once a year in January or in like November of the previous year, I do like a summary of all the games I played that year, and I didn't do that this year, and it's already May. Uh, I like to talk about the games I played because I find it fun to look back and realize how much time has elapsed. Because when I'm playing a game like Underrail, it takes months to finish it, and I, and then I start up another long game that takes months to finish. Like, do you remember back in October? And even, I think, up until November or even December, I was playing through Pathologic HD, a game I intend to play again this October, this time playing with the Horospects uh, through, his con through his story. But it seems like a lifetime ago that I played through that game. On, on that note, a lifetime ago... Uh, I had just recently, as you know, or maybe you didn't know, I was playing through the Dark Mod on my channel. And I don't know, I'm very, I'm very blessed because the, often the developers of a game or the creators of a mod will find my videos and comment on them. And I am always uh, grateful and humbled when they do that. I'm so, again, appreciative of all the work that these people put into the things that they create and release for us to play. Uh, the maker, uh, the map designer for uh, the swing level I played in the Dark Mod uh, stopped by, and it turns out that he was the person who also made the Grimrock Master Quest, which I was, I think the original, I think I had the first playthrough of that on my channel. I just deleted it like a week and a half ago off my channel. It was one of those, it was like 80 videos long, each video was like six minutes long, a terrible qual uh, audio quality, what have you. And I felt a little bad that I deleted it, but I was never going to watch it again. And no one else, it, it, I'm looking like, I occasionally, I, I don't do it very often at all, but I checked some of the, met the metrics from my old videos and no one's watching the really old ones not really and so i didn't feel too bad about deleting it but even then when he stopped by to comment on the, that one video i had done he was like hey weren't you the weren't you like one of the guys who like originally played through the master quest i made and i was like yeah holy crap good to see you again it was it's fun to uh to talk to the makers of uh, of all these different games and what have you uh, thinking about this sort of thing i hope i haven't been overly harsh on some of the games i play I try to be very fair to the games <laughs> that I play. And we, hold on, we don't want to sell the claw, not yet. I don't want to sell the Jimmy Heiser. I want to look at those again. 
Uh, let's, let's. How much do I get for all this? Almost all the cash off of you. Um, I want these bullets. We don't need any more 7.62 standard rounds. Uh, let's sell the sniper rifle for all the rest of that cash, and I'll take even more repair kits from you. And then crafting materials. We're not making it. Oh, is that a rapid reloader? Always buy the rapid reloaders, Tim, whenever you see them. Every time you see them. I guess we'll buy the silencer, too. Uh. Since my mechanics... Let's think. How much do I get for this? Yeah, let, let's buy a shotgun frame as well. That would be good. Oh! Crap! He doesn't He doesn't want that weapon. Alright, never mind. Alright, we'll just... Uh, well, then, I'm not going to take that after all. And... Done. Wait, was that all his cash? Oh, no, that, that's far from done, Tim. He still has tons of cash on him. You messed that up. You misplayed that. Okay, well, he's not buying... Uh, do we have anything else we can sell him really quick? Let's see. I know he'll buy those. Uh, not really. Okay, so this is fully repaired because he just want another gun. Let's see if Dircia is buying... <coughs> One belt... But she's not buying crossbows today. We have the belt to sell her. So, is this worth repairing? What type of... It's fabric? Um... Probably not. And the, the dehumanizer is worth repairing. So let's go ahead and repair that weapon. <clears throat> I can't talk. <coughs> I have an itch in my throat. That before you pair it, no. Uh, let's use another full one of these. All right, so uh, we got. Actually, I think you guys don't need to watch me repair this stuff as I ramble on about games that you guys, uh, you guys don't care about. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's just go ahead and stop here, and we'll pick this back up in the next episode, where I think we will start exploring some more of the actual underrail. Uh, we'll explore more of lower underrail and probably begin exploring some more of the cave systems. So I'll see you guys then. Thank you for watching, and take care, everyone.